Resonance reduction has become a time-consuming part of mixing and mastering, so much so that multiple plugins have rapidly grown in popularity, all tackling this issue. Now, Sooth 2 is the standard for quickly removing resonances. Meanwhile, FabFilter's Pro-Q4 is attempting to do something similar with their spectral EQ function. And a few other plugins have popped up, trying to carve out a place in this newer niche of the audio plugin market. Now, that begs the question, is there a simpler, less costly, or better sounding way to control resonances in a project? So let's figure that out as we get into controlling resonances, the bane of most engineers' existence. Let's start with the cleanest resonance reduction possible. Now, a few years ago, I got bored and tried to reverse engineer the Rode NT1 mic. I got close, but always had this strange, persistent resonance at 14 kHz that I could never figure out, nor could the person that was helping me with the project. Now, since I wanted to use it for at least one session, I tried Sooth 2, but I could still hear the resonance. EQ created a noticeable change to the timbre, and any other plugin I tried had the same effect. That's when I started spending more time with Isotope's RX platform and realized it's a not so practical, but incredibly clean sounding resonance reducer. I could highlight the spike at 14 kHz, make the filter as accurate as possible, and then delete the info, all while having next to no impact on the surrounding frequencies. If I wanted to, I could also copy information from 11 to 13 kHz and paste it over the area to patch the empty spot, so to speak. Now doing this for a resonance that moves around would be way too time consuming to make it worth it. However, after testing RX against various EQs and linear phase filters, this FFT processor was by far the least destructive. So, if you're trying to reduce a static resonance, maybe from faulty gear or a unique characteristic of an instrument, then this is by far the best option. Now to show this, I'll recreate the sound of my knockoff NT1 mic by adding a 14 kHz sine wave to a recording. I'll try EQ, Soothe, and then finally RX to remove the resonance. Notice how RX is by far the least destructive and the most accurate. Next up, let's cover practical resonance reduction. So more times than not, when reducing resonances, there are only two to three frequencies that are causing the issue. Instead of using a full bandwidth of resonance reduction, if we observe the response, we can pinpoint the exact frequency or frequencies to attenuate. So say we're listening to a vocal, and when the performer hits two notes in particular, we hear the resonance that we want less of. These notes could be back to back, they could be spread apart, it really doesn't matter. The important part is making a mental note of when they occur in the section that we're reviewing. And once we know, hey, at this point I hear a resonance, we could listen to it, observe, and find the frequency or frequencies responsible for any unpleasantness. Then, we just have to attenuate them with bell filters. Sometimes only a couple of dB is enough to create the needed balance. Now you might be thinking, well, I don't want those frequencies to be attenuated all the time. This is why I need something like Suit 2, that adjusts throughout the performance. But if the resonance is below four kilohertz and it still relates to the fundamental of the note, then the resonance likely only occurs when a particular note is sung. In other words, if that note isn't sung, there's nothing in that range to attenuate. So you're not cutting out anything unrelated, there's likely nothing there to attenuate until the resonance occurs. And if you're still concerned about this, use a dynamic filter that only triggers when the resonance is present and aggressive enough to trigger it. Now, this might seem like extra work when you could just use a resonance reduction plugin, but that's kind of the point. Instead of using a quick but inaccurate method, take the time to make a more impactful change without affecting any unrelated frequencies. Let's take a listen to an instrument that has a resonance that I'd like attenuated, one I've purposefully amplified for the sake of this demo. I'll use an EQ to balance the resonance and compare it to a resonance reducer. Notice how much unrelated info is affected with the resonance reducer, even when I attempt to control its processing as much as possible.
Real quick, Sage Audio is an analog mastering service. We've been around for 20 years, and mastering starts at $49 a track. There's a link in the description and an ad at the end of the video if you want to learn more. Next up, let's cover trouble with high frequency resonances. So if your issue isn't below 4 kHz or in the range of melodic frequencies, controlling it might be more difficult. As we covered in the first section of the video, Isotope RX is a great choice if the resonance is static or consistent throughout a take, but it's not practical for complex situations. This leaves us with EQ or a resonance reduction plugin to work with. However, like our hearing, equalizers and plugins that are frequency specific, like Sooth2, work logarithmically. Like our hearing, the fidelity is a lot better in low frequencies than in high frequencies. For example, say I introduce a very narrow bell filter. In the low frequency range, this filter's bandwidth may cover somewhere between 5 to 10 Hz. But as I move it to the high range and zoom in, notice that the same filter covers a much larger range, usually 50 to 100 Hz if not more. Now it only makes sense that EQs would mirror how we hear. However, this makes it difficult to make accurate changes to the high frequency range. So this gives us a few options. First, we could use EQ in a similar manner to the last chapter, but with narrow filters and ideally linear phase processing to make the filters more accurate. Alternatively, we can settle for broader filters. Since we're less sensitive to pitch in the highs, a broad filter centered on the resonance will still work well. It won't sound too much like unrelated frequencies are attenuated since it's difficult to differentiate between them. Lastly, this is where I think Sooth2 works the best. If we use high quality, linear phase processing mixed with sharp filters, we can accurately attenuate multiple resonances. Again, we might not be able to pinpoint the exact frequency we want, but the attenuation doesn't need to be too exact due to our lack of sensitivity to the high frequency range. So let's take a listen to EQ and Sooth2 used on high frequencies. Personally, I rarely find that this type of processing is needed, but in case this is useful, let's compare the two. Last up, let's compare the best two resonance reducer plugins. Although Sooth2 is the most popular, people often overlook the Golfos EQ. It works in a very similar way in which a preset frequency response triggers various filters. Whenever the input doesn't correspond to the preset response, either amplification or attenuation occurs. Whereas Sooth solely attenuates the signal, Golfos uses both attenuation and amplification to balance the response. The tame function is particularly useful for this, in which more attenuation is applied. Now since you have the option to utilize masking to reduce resonances, since amplification to mask frequencies occurs with the recover function, I believe it results in a more natural sounding reduction of resonances. It doesn't offer as much control as Sooth2, but the introduction of amplification makes a big difference in my opinion. So let's compare the two processors handling the same signal. Notice how both take care of the resonances, but the Golf Foss EQ has a slightly more natural sound. Get professional analog mastering that accurately translates what you hear in your head. Seriously though, when people work with us, they get results. That's why major industry professionals like Keith Urban's producer Aaron Schurz works with us, Grammy award-winning AJ Castillo, Billboard number one charted artist Megan Lindsay, Grammy award-winning artist Tulis, The Voice singer Cody Ballou, Grammy-nominated producer Tyler Kane, Warner Music artist Ricky Young, and the list goes on. Why waste your time creating masters that don't accurately translate what you hear in your head when you could instantly fix a problem by clicking the link in the description and working directly with professionals who have already done what you're trying to do. We've mastered thousands of songs that accurately translate what each client hears in their head and it'll work for you too. Click the link in the description now and get direct access to us for personalized analog mastering that accurately translates what you hear in your head.